Welcome to Building My Legacy Podcast. This podcast is designed for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to leave a legacy and will provide strategies that focus upon key elements for legacy creation, determining your desired impact and its benefit, increasing your legacy's reach by engaging key stakeholders, planning, prioritizing, and executing. Here's your host, Dr. Lois Sonstegard. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Building My Legacy podcast. I am here today with Rhett uh, Powell. He has uh, done some really rather remarkable things, very involved with business leaders uh, in, in many places, actually, living between Brazil and the U.S. at the moment. He is part of the Marshall Goldsmith 100 Group. He's a business advisor He won last year, 2018, the Best Small Business Coach of the Year Award. Um, He has done a tremendous amount of work with entrepreneurs and business leaders. So with that, uh, you write for Forbes magazine, you write for Inc., you write for CNBC. You certainly uh, have made your face and, and voice heard. And now you're on LinkedIn Live Lunch Times with Brett. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. So if you'd like to just share a little bit about how you got to where you've gotten uh, so people can get to know who you really are. Yeah, well, thank you, first off, for having me on the show. This is a real delight. And uh, to, just to have a conversation with you is is, is just amazing. And, and I do appreciate that opportunity. Uh, you know, the, the story, um, I didn't have a grand life plan. I've always been a person that went with the mo- the moment and went with my gut and, and and what my gut told me. And I think for me, the most sort of critical time is I, I was a Peace Corps volunteer uh, back in, in the early, late 90s, early 2000s, and really fell in love with it. I had done a bunch of jobs. I was kind of late going into Peace Corps. I was, I was 30. Um, and sort of going through a, I wouldn't say a midlife crisis, but I was, I think I was going through my, uh, a crisis of, of doing, I wanted to do something that was meaningful. I had been working in a bunch of different careers and really hadn't found for me, what was, what was what my life's calling, I guess. So Peace Corps seemed like a good option at the time. I was intrigued by, by, by the idea of it. Uh, I mean, Kennedy's words still spoke to me when he talked about serving your country and, and, and doing something greater than yourself. And so um, the Peace Corps changed my life in a, in, a way, in a lot of ways because after Peace Corps, I continued doing international development for USAID okay. and, and was, was really, for all intents and purposes, I had a great life. I mean, I had a great job. I got to travel got to fill my passport pages and see new places and do work that helped people. Yes. All things I thought were very important to me, but I still had that nagging feeling in my gut that said, okay, you're not quite there yet. This is, this is good. Um, but there's something else missing. And, and I had a friend uh, that I worked with and we talked for years about starting our own company. And Finally, one day we said, okay, we've we got to do this. I, I can always come back to this, this work overseas if I want to, but I've got to, we've got to take this ch- chance. And, and so we started a company. It was a children's toy company. We bought a company uh, out of in South Carolina, a one product company that we fell in love with. And, and that, the, the, the day I got the keys to that business, I, I said, okay, this is it. I mean, this is, this is what I was supposed to be doing uh, right now. And, um, and, and that's sort of where this whole journey of coaching and uh, we, we exited that company in 2014. We sold, sold the company. Uh, I started again thinking about what was next. And, and, you know, I started meeting people like Marshall Goldsmith and, and Mark Thompson and people like that. And this whole coaching idea uh, kept coming up and coming, coming back. And I remembered my days as a Peace Corps volunteer, as a teacher, and how much I really, really loved that and how much I loved seeing that light bulb moment go off in people's heads, you know, when something clicks. And so, I, I, 
you know, here I am as a coach now and, and I, and an adv- business advisor. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm in where I, I'm, I'm where I need to be and where I'm supposed to be. And I think when you find that in life, you hold on to it and you, you, you embrace it and you, you know, you go full, you know, you go all in and that's kind of where I am now. And, and I, I wouldn't change that. Can I ask you a question about that? Cause I just had a very interesting conversation with a executive. Uh, the question was, how do you know when you have found that purpose? And, and part of the struggle I think for people is many people have a big notion purpose is big so when you arrived at that how did you know you had arrived at it uh it's just this feeling of i I hate to use the word completeness or being feeling you know but i i don't feel when i get up in the morning i don't feel like there's something missing i don't feel like um there's you know that i'm lost or i don't feel like i'm off course i feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be, I f- you know, and I think that that's part of that is paying attention to yourself and paying attention to uh, being more self-aware and being tuned in to what, uh, how you feel and what's going on mentally, uh, emotionally. I think that all plays into it. I think, um, so I, I don't know if that's a great answer, but I think that some of that is just listening to yourself and listening to what, you know, what you're thinking and what's going on with you. And uh, I think that's how, you know, I mean, I, I just know I, there's not a magic thing to it. I, I just, I feel like I'm there. Yeah. Right. I'm not wanting something else. Okay. So do you take time to reflect? Is that part of how you arrive at that is, is introspection a big part of what you do? I, I look ahead more than I look back. Okay. Um, I, I don't, um, you know, we all make mistakes. We all have said, oops, I shouldn't have done that, or I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have uh, gone there or whatever. And, and I think it's okay to, to understand, understand that and to fix those if you make mistakes or to think about how you made that mistake, but dwelling on it and, and, and rehashing it and, and living in that. Um, I live in the future and I, I think about the future more than I think about the past. Uh, you know, if I made a mistake in the past and say, okay, is there something I can do to fix that? Um, then I try to do that, but I don't, I don't dwell on it so much and, and reflect on it so much as, as much as I say, okay, what's next? What am I thinking about, you know, tomorrow and the next day, next year, you know, where am I going? Making sure that I'm going where I want to go. So one of the interesting things that you provide, Brett, is this marvelous combination of having done your own business and also now coaching. And um, I I think so many times people in the consulting world and coaching world haven't lived in and gotten their hands and feet really dirty. So if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about what you have seen some of the biggest challenges being for leaders and um, how that experience of yours has shaped that thinking that you have. Sure. I, I think, you know, I see a lot of, as you do, you know, in your, in your practice, we see a lot and, and, and there's not one or two things that are the most common. I think that there, I probably have a list of top 10 things that of things I see most regularly. I think um, it, it, you know, and because I work in small businesses and I'm, I'm not only a coach, but I'm an advisor. So I do, a lo- I, I do some different things and than a lot of coaches, I do process stuff. I do, you know, HR and team building and culture and, and uh, even manufacturing. I mean, I, you know, I'm a product guy at heart. And so, you know, I know product pretty well and how to make it and know how to, you know, sell it. And so, I work in a, a lot of I, w- I work a lot on those kind of things as well, uh, but I, I see a, a, a bunch of things: communication as a leader, uh, you know, m- getting people to understand the vision, uh, understanding their role in that in that in the company, or understanding how important they are, uh, and, and communicating that to your teams. I think is one of the things I see a lot of uh, of uh, inspiring people. Uh, 
to work towards that mission is something I see a lot of people have trouble with. Um, balancing life, integrating, uh, you know, not work-life balance so much as integrating work and life and other important things into your and into how you manage your, how you, you know, exist, I guess. Um, and then, you know, building a team, building a culture, uh, the fundamentals. I see uh, people who really struggle with the, the simple things in, in managing a business, a burnout, see a lot of burnout, um, and also see a lot of people sort of crippled by decision-making and fear and, and worrying about um, what deci- their impact of their decisions. And so um, those are sort of the common things that I end up working on a lot with the businesses that I, that I take on. Uh, I don't know if that answered the question, but that's, that's sort, of, sort of what I see most commonly. Right. And you talk about with entrepreneurs how entrepreneurs know how to start a business but not know how to grow a business. Um, what if, what is it that you've seen there that has drawn you to that? Well, I, di- I didn't know how to grow my business either. I mean, it took us years to have that. Break. How many years did you do your business? So we were in the business for seven years before we okay. exited. We went from uh, basically broke to, uh, you know, a multi-million dollar business and um, working in 30 countries and, you know, with make, making product to 30, 35 countries. And so uh, we didn't know how to scale it. We didn't know how to, to grow it. We, we didn't know quite what the model was. And we fumbled around for a bit to sort of figure that out. And I think, you know, for most entrepreneurs, it's a learning, pro- you know, the, the, this, this whole leadership thing, this whole, entrepreneurship thing is a learning process. If you do it with an open mind, right. And you do it with the intent of, of growing and, and um, being successful at it. I, I think it's a learning process and it's a maturity process. I know, I know things that bothered me when I was early in the business don't bother me now in running another business, right. They, the, the things I worried about and kept me up at night uh, early on, a year, two years, three years in didn't bother me anymore because I knew that there was a solution. I knew that I could deal with that and, and, and work it out. Um, so I think, uh, I, I guess the point of that is, is that it's a growing and learning process. And if you, uh, if you have an open mind, uh, you, you learn and you mature and you get better at it and you figure out how to scale and you figure out how to grow. And I don't think anybody really, I mean, we had a 600 page business plan that made a great doorstop. <laughs> you know, wow. we thought we knew, we thought we knew it all, right? We thought we had gone in with a really solid plan. And we had we were two management consultants who'd been working with businesses all over the world, right? So we knew what we were doing, but we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, <laughs> you know, right. uh, and we learned that pretty quick. So um, that business plan went out the window, and we had to redo it, and we had to rethink it, and we had to constantly rethink it. Um, so I don't know. So for you, as you look at small business owners, entrepreneurs, biggest piece of advice you have for them? Uh, focus and persevere. I think, uh, gosh, I could go on and on. Um, make processes, uh, have, have a system that you can, uh, that you can teach people Make it simple. Um, focus on your core product, your core competency, the thing that makes you really good, the things that you're really good at. Uh, if you're not good at something, try to learn something about it, um, but then hire someone to help you with it. Uh, learn enough of it that you can uh, tell people what you need and what you want, but uh, that you can you know, give to somebody, uh, uh, delegate or hire somebody to come in and do that. Um, and I, I think that's that's it. I mean, and then persevere, and know that they're going to be up and up and down and up and down moments, and uh, you know, never give up. And 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 uh, you know, we there were so many times that we were on the brink of like disaster, you know, and and, and uh, you just you keep pushing through, and then you get that breakthrough. And I think 
um, so many people um, don't know how hard it's going to be, but it, it, it is hard. It's really hard. You know, I, I think um, I, I have been in the same shoes as you. I've, I've also had a startup manufacturing company and took it globally. But nobody can prepare you for the amount of hard work and the amount of resistance that you also experience in the process. Yep. So um, you, you can hear it, but it's quite different to experience it, isn't it? Oh, I mean... Uh, somebody asked me the other day, would I do it again? And, and I said, yeah, I, I probably would because um, I, I think that's just, that's who I am. That's my nature, I think. And I, and I actually enjoyed that phase of it immensely. Um, the phase I actually did not like very much at all was when we were um, in a really good position globally and, you know, with product and we were humming along very nicely with no problems. Um, that's when I was bored. <laughs> so. The challenge was gone. Yeah. So, yeah. And entrepreneurs sometimes have a way of creating problems just in order to have that adrenaline constantly going. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. You had, with all the writing that you do and traveling that you do, the people that you meet, you surely have thought about your own legacy and what it is that, you want to leave behind. Would you mind sharing what that might be and, and how you develop that? I actually, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Um, I just recently last week, in fact, uh, was at, well, I spent the last three weeks uh, in the U S uh, back in the U S my uh, cousin, some, somewhat considered my brother. I think in a lot of ways uh, I was an only child, um, this died of cancer and I spent the last two weeks with him. Wow. Uh, he died. Yeah. And the, 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 what made me really think about my legacy and all of that was to see the impact that he had on so many people. He was a teacher. He was a, he was a, a elementary school teacher and a soccer coach. Oh, wow. In, 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 the, in the city where he was from. And uh, to see the outpouring of, of support for his family and his kids, um, to see the response on, on social media and, and the cards and the people coming by the house. And, um, and then to, uh, I gave his, the eulogy at his funeral and to see hmm. 700 people uh, fill this place. And it was over full. It was uh, people were out the door, you know, who wanted to come and, and just uh, say their goodbyes and, and give their condolences and to, and to see the students. I mean, um, one of the principals stood up and read uh, comments from, from students and the letters from students to his family uh, to see the impact that he had on young people's lives and, and, how he really took on the most challenging kids and, 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 uh, and made, made them, you know, his, his projects. Um, it made me think a lot about what I do. And I, and I think the answer to that question is uh, for him, it was very simple. He was doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was doing what he was called to do. And I think if you do that and you, um, uh, do good work and you work with good people and you have good intent and you try to be good um, and you associate yourself with good people. I think your legacy will take care of itself. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that I focus so much on a product or a company as a legacy, or I, I think to me, it's about doing good work, making a good product, uh, uh, being a good uh, father, being a good spouse, uh, doing those kind of things really well and having um, living with was sort of that intent in my life, then my legacy will take care of itself. You know, I don't think he took, I don't think he thought about his legacy at all. He just loved teaching and he loved coaching. And so to me, if I do that and I do something I love and I do it like that and do it with the, the uh, passion and the intent that he did it with, then my legacy will, 
will be what it, it'll be good. It'll be a good legacy, right? Um, so I think that that's how I look at it. Um, you know, I think when I was 20, I probably would have answered that question differently or 30 when I, I would have probably said, well, this company is my legacy, you know, I'm leaving, you know, uh, but I think as I get older and, 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 um, I, I think that has shifted for me to, to be, um, to live more with intent and just to be good. You know, if, it's always sad to me when I see people at a funeral, I guess, and a family is fractionated. The person was successful financially, but there's no family. And mm-hmm. there's a sadness about that, isn't there? It's a real sadness about that. Yeah. And I, I don't want that. I mean, I don't uh, I, at all. Yeah. Well, you won't because you're focused in such a different place. And, you know, being focused on people, I think, shifts everything, doesn't it, to really grow and build people. So I'm curious, what are okay. you most grateful for? You, you have, I, I just really appreciate your reflectiveness and um, your honesty about that. And so I think when people are reflective, they're also grateful. So what are you grateful for most in your life? I think if you'd asked me that six months ago, I'd have probably given you a different answer. I think today, um, you know, having uh, been through the last few weeks, um, it's probably not much different, but I, I think uh, for family and friends and, and life itself. And, and I think, um, you know, I think in this time where uh, public officials are calling people names and we live in this time of, you know, just uh, everything seems so ugly. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for being around people that, uh, are more of a light and more of uh, surrounding myself with people that are more positive and, and uh, who are doing good. I mean, the MG 100 is a, a prime example of, of, of people who are trying to do good in the world. And I think, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to do that and to be able to um, be in a position where I can uh, focus on uh, being around people that give me energy and, and, and uh, that I can learn from and be better. Uh, so I think those are the kind of things I'm grateful for. I, I um, you know, wow, I, um, I, I'm just, I'm fortunate and lucky and I, I, I know that. And, um, and so absolutely grateful for that every day. So Rhett, our time is goes too quickly and it's almost up. And it's one last question for you. Um, as you look at emerging leaders and you have seen what you've seen, advice that you have, a, a, um, yeah, a single thought or two that you think is really important for people to think about. Uh, surround yourself with people that challenge you, that have different ideas than you maybe, um, surround yourself with people that are positive and give you positive energy and that support your dreams and where you want to go in your life. Uh, people that I'll tell you the truth. Um, but even in that truth will support you and in, in what you want to do. Uh, this, the other thing is, is to build a network. I, I think the importance of our network um, is, uh, is so I, I can't say it enough. I think, you know, do things that, and, and be active in your community, be active in, in business networks um, because it's such a valuable way to learn. It's such a valuable way to, um, to be associated with people who can help you. Um, and, and the other thing is don't be afraid to ask for help. That that's, that's probably the best piece of advice I've ever gotten is don't be afraid to ask for help because when you ask for help, people like are more likely to help, <laughs> you know, um, and I, I, that's sort of hard to do for a lot of people. It's hard to ask for help, but, yes. um, it, it is amazing when you do. It, it, it is. And it, it is, um, you always have to get past your own fear, don't you? When you ask for help. Yeah. It's and, not easy. It really isn't no. easy. Um, cause it's a, it's a, 
vulnerability vulnerability to it. That we want to think of ourselves as being smart and self sufficient. I think is part of it. So yeah. Brett, thank you so much for making time and on your very busy travel schedule and to talk with our audience. And for those of you who are, who are listening today, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you would like to get some further information, uh, Rhett has done a great deal of writing. Um, any resources that we can have available to you from him, we'll certainly be glad to pass on just simply Uh, connect with us or email us and we'll be glad to do that for you. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. You've been listening to Building My Legacy Podcast with Dr. Lois Sonstegard. To book your appointment with Dr. Sonstegard, visit www.buildtomorrow.com.